If you're trying to land your first cybersecurity job or any job for that matter, then having a LinkedIn profile is non-negotiable because when you apply for a job, it's common for people to look you up, to Google you, but what they really want to find is your LinkedIn profile. They want to know that you're a real person and LinkedIn is completely free. So you have absolutely no reason not to have a good LinkedIn profile. But even if you're not looking for a job, there are so many jobs that don't even get advertised. Instead, recruiters and hiring managers like me go directly to LinkedIn to search for candidates. Hiring is a lot cheaper that way. It takes about three minutes to create a LinkedIn profile and it's super easy to do. But this is not what I'm about to show you in this video. Instead, I'm going to fix the LinkedIn profile of someone who's both an awesome and an established cybersecurity professional. You will be able to implement those fixes right away, even if you haven't worked in cybersecurity before. Let's get into it. This is Sandra. She is an awesome cybersecurity YouTuber and she has been working in cybersecurity for a few years. She recently quit her job to take some time off but she started to get worried because recruiters aren't reaching out to her with job offers as much as they used to. I glanced quickly through her LinkedIn profile and I found few issues. Fixing these issues will maximize her chances of getting contacted by recruiters for her dream role. There was also an important action that she wasn't taken on LinkedIn that will make the biggest difference. We will get to that later in the video. But before we start, let's ask Sandra a question. So tell me, what's your ultimate dream job? A cybersecurity engineer at Google. So with that information, let's have a look at her profile. When we look at a LinkedIn profile, the first thing that we look at is the profile picture. Sandra has a really professional and nice profile picture. The issue I see is that some individuals get too hung up on the photo and they try to go super fancy. They try to get a professional photo taken by a photographer. That is not required. But I also saw some individuals, they put a red circle around their profile picture to make it stand out more. This is not necessary. This is LinkedIn, it's not Instagram. So any photo that you can take with your phone where you look professional, where you dress professional, and ideally, if you can smile in the photo, that will make people trust you even more. But someone asked me the other day, what about those AI generated photos that are getting popular nowadays? Personally, I'm not a fan of those photos. It's always preferred to have a professional looking photo of you. The next thing that we see in the profile is the headline. This is extremely important because this is the first thing that recruiters and hiring managers read when they look at your LinkedIn profile. We need to be super clear about the job that we're targeting. So in Sandra's case, her profile emphasizes her content creation and YouTube channel, which is perfectly fine. However, her goal is to land the job as a cybersecurity engineer in Google. Therefore, the tagline should be cybersecurity engineer and between brackets, we say proficient at Python. Now, Sandra has cybersecurity experience, so she can back that up. But if she didn't have any experience, then she could simply write aspiring cybersecurity engineer and then say proficient in Python. Now, the reason why I added Python is because I did a little bit of research and I know that Google uses Python internally. They use other languages, but Python is still a popular language that's in use in Google. So we need to make use of the technologies that our goal company uses to help us land a job at that target company. So what I want you to do is to research your target company, see what technologies they use, and then add them to your profile. This is how we reach our goal. And here's a little secret for you. You can be proficient at something, even if you haven't worked with that thing professionally in a job. You can add that skill to your portfolio by doing certifications and labs and training courses. The next section is the about section. This is where I always see mistakes on LinkedIn profiles because individuals have a tendency to write their life story in the about section. But before we continue, a word from our sponsor, NordPass Business. NordPass Business is a password manager that provides employees seamless access to sensitive information across devices. With strong hard to crack passwords, it has so many cool features such as the auto login feature and multi-factor authentication. It stores sensitive information such as passwords, notes, and credit card information in an encrypted vault. This allows team members to share sensitive information securely. You can save your credit card once and it can be shared with other business units and employees. But NordPass Business also creates strong passwords by default with easy to configure password policies. But my favorite feature is still the data breach notification. This allows you to change any of your passwords that were compromised 
used as part of any breach before any damage is done. But best of all, you can secure your business effortlessly with a three month NordPass business free trial by using the activation code UNIXGUY at nordpass.com slash UNIXGUY. It's a limited offer only. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. And back to the video. Now Sandra says she has background in InfoSec and software development. So here I recommend completely removing software development from the about section because this might confuse some recruiters or some hiring managers because they don't know you. So they wouldn't know if you have experience in information security or software development. We need to be targeted and narrow focused on the target job that we want. Therefore, in Sandra's case, I would emphasize and list her security engineering skills. For example, I would write something like cybersecurity engineer proficient in Python and then I would simply add a list of relevant Python projects. For example, in this video, I've listed so many Python projects that you can add to your profile. So you can simply go to that video, do these projects and, this, and then add them in the about section as projects that will help you get to your target role. The next line in Sandra's about section is really interesting. She says she's a big advocate for women in STEM and she encourages underrepresented groups to get into tech which I'm all about. So big bonus points for Sandra for doing this. Now we can leave this here or alternatively, the way that I would do it is I would add it in the next section, which is experience. Because I personally prefer to keep the about section fully targeted for our goal job, as opposed to what we currently do and who we currently are. When you get to the interview, you can share more of yourself and your interests. But for now, the purpose of the LinkedIn profile is to get the interest of the recruiter or the hiring manager to read the rest of your profile and hopefully reach out to you for an interview. The next section is the job experience section. This is the juicy part. This is where you can showcase your skills. But unfortunately, most people neglect this area altogether and they just list the names of the jobs they've done. In my opinion, this is a hugely underutilized section of the LinkedIn profile. So in Sandra's case, I will focus on her latest job at Stack Overflow and I would again elaborate more on projects that she's done that are relevant to her target job. Now the projects don't need to exclusively be about her target job. She can add stuff that she did in that job that may not necessarily be relevant to that target job, but it's really important to list examples of hands-on projects that she did. Now the way that I personally like to present projects is by saying what the project is about, but more importantly, the result of that project. For example, she can write something like automated cybersecurity tasks in a security operation center using Python, which resulted in 20% reduction in incident response time. This is key. Adding the result of the project and possibly quantify it by saying it led to 20% reduction or whichever number you might come up with is a hugely underrated tip that can really get you a lot of interest from hiring managers. Now, as I said, if you're not already working in cybersecurity or if you didn't have a job before, you can simply say that your job is a cybersecurity student and then you can list the projects that you've done as part of your cybersecurity training courses and as part of the hands-on labs that you do. I have so many videos that can explain to you how to do that, so please check them out. For Sandra, her most recent role is as a content creator and a YouTuber. Here, I think she can add her interest in helping women get jobs into STEM and helping minority groups get more representation in tech. This is where she can emphasize that. But not only that, I would still use this section to help her land her dream role. For example, she can say something like coaching and mentorship for aspiring cybersecurity engineers. Now remember, this is not the only thing that she does. She does a lot of things. And as I said and emphasized earlier, the purpose of LinkedIn profile is not to include everything that you've done. Instead, you need to include and highlight the stuff that are relevant to your goal job. This is important. Now, the next step is, in my opinion, the most important step when it comes to LinkedIn, which is an action oriented step that I want you to start doing right now to maximize your chances of landing your dream job. I want you to go to LinkedIn and start following the companies that you want to work at. But then when you click on that company profile, I want you to start adding individuals who work on those companies. Focus on those with the title manager or team leader, because those are the individuals who will interview you for those jobs. But then, and most importantly, is I want you to send them a message expressing your interest in working for their organization. And 
ask them if they have any job openings or any internships around. I know this might sound scary, we don't like to send messages to random people that we don't know, but trust me with this one, the worst thing that can happen is they don't reply to you. This is a hugely underrated tip that most people are simply not doing. I want you to improve your LinkedIn profile and start taking that action right now rinse and repeat until you at least get an interview. Now, if you want to see what Sandra thinks of those changes on her LinkedIn profile, and if you wanna see if she was happy with those changes, then watch this video on Sandra's channel and see what happens next.